Man, I ran out of water. Never a good feeling when you run out of water in the desert. Welcome back to New Zealand. We are in the central part of the North Island of New Zealand today to begin our tackling of the Tongariro Northern Circuit. Many people know this area for the Tongariro Crossing. It's one of the most popular day hikes in all of New Zealand. However, we are doing the full Tongariro Circuit. The Tongariro Alpine Crossing is the second day of this two to four day circuit. Some people do it two days, one night, three days, two nights. We're gonna take it slow, four days, three nights, around the active volcano Tongariro, and there's views of several other active volcanoes in the area, lots of interesting volcanic geological features, stunning stark landscapes. This 43.1 kilometer circuit is one of the best hikes in New Zealand, and that is why it has earned the designation of one of the great walks of New Zealand. I am super excited to tackle our first trek on an active volcano. It's going to be an epic few days. Hello. So since this is still great walk season, the huts cost $36 per person per night. After April, at the end of great walk season, the huts are only $15 a night. So we kind of booked this last minute, so only two of the three huts were available. So on the third night, we're actually gonna be camping, and tent camping, and so they charge you $15 a person for tent camping, which seems a bit much, but I guess, you know, the, the area where you can tent camp is kind of limited. Coincidentally, <laughs> the Great Walk huts are great, coincidentally, or not. You know, they usually have flush toilets, they usually have uh, gas stoves that you can cook on, and just good facilities all around, good wood-burning stoves for heat and nice bunks, and they really, really do a good job of making the Great Walk huts comfortable. The trails are nice and wide, they're pretty easy, relatively easy than some of the other tramping tracks in New Zealand, so they really, is a good thing to encourage people of all levels to get out there and experience these great walks. So a quick tidbit I just wanted to mention, the town where you start the track here is called Whakapapa. And actually the interesting thing about that word Whakapapa, I learned that it means, in Maori, it means kind of like your lineage or your ancestry. A lot of Maori people can can trace their Whakapapa back to the, the original Waka that, that landed on New Zealand. Their, their original ancestor that landed on New Zealand, the Waka he was on, and the lineage going from them all the way up to present day. So fun little fact about the, the name of the village here and, and the significance of Whakapapa. So already in the background on the way in, some nice views of Mount Ruapehu, which is the largest active volcano in New Zealand and actually the highest mountain on the North Island. Um, there's a section of that where they actually have like a ski resort, so that's pretty cool. But still just pressing on here. I've heard someone say the first day of this circuit is the most boring, whatever that means, but enjoying it leisurely, not too much elevation yet, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. So coming in and out of the volcanic scenery, we pass through some lovely dense beach forest. Wonderful to have this little bit of shade from this canopy. Good flow coming, so on the way back down, we'll see Taranaki Falls, and there is a good amount of water coming down this little stream here. Crystal clear snow melt. Might have to jump in that on the last day.
So you can see Mount Nagaruho right there as we're approaching the circuit. And that is the inspiration for Mount Doom in the Lord of the Rings movies. I think they, they use that and obviously with uh, plenty of CGI and special effects. That is what was used as the basis for Mount Doom right there. Well, just saw a sign for the Manga Tapopo hut two minutes away. And looks like we actually made good time. Only about three hours to make it to the first hut. I read it's gonna take around four hours. And we were going pretty slow, so three hours, pretty surprising time actually. Plenty of time to chill out and enjoy these views before we cook a little dinner and hit the sack. Well, just getting ready to start the second day here on the northern circuit of Tongariro. Today we're gonna do the most of the Tongariro crossing, what many people do as the, the famous day hike. We're gonna see a lot of the spectacular volcanic geological features. We're also gonna be making our steepest elevation gain, almost 700 meters over about three miles. We're gonna go up to the top and then back down to the hut. Should only be about a five hour day still. There's a side track uh, to a, a blue lake, which you can possibly see from the track or, or go down closer, not exactly sure. But uh, not, not the best night of sleep. People getting up real early in the hut and uh, apparently they don't know how to whisper, talking at full volume, so. But uh, I'm feeling a little refreshed, at least from yesterday. Ready to hit five hours on the trail and see some excellent stuff on the Tongariro Northern Circuit. So we're passing through this glacial valley. Normally, glacial valleys are U-shaped, but this one has been flattened out at the bottom by several lava flows. You can see the lava rocks and surrounded by several volcanoes and actually we're already on what they call the Tongariro Volcano Complex. We're already on it. We can see the Mount Doom in the background and yesterday on the way in in the Tussock area we saw so many wildflowers blooming. I thought that a more appropriate name for this instead of Mount Doom they should call it Mount Bloom at this time of year because so many wildflowers are blooming. So about five minutes off the main track is our first side track of the day. And nice little waterfall here called Soda Springs. Looking nice, looking real refreshing. Well, this little waterfall here is quite the oasis. It reminds me of uh, Maidenhair Falls out in Anzabrago Desert in Southern California. Like a desert oasis. Not sure if this area is considered desert, but I know at some point we get a view of the only desert in New Zealand. This landscape really reminds me of Mojave National Preserve where those three deserts meet to form a stunning landscape in Southern California the Great Basin, the Mojave, and the Sonoran Desert. Of course, ancient volcanoes in that area as well, so a lot of the same geology. Though as we get further up, there's gonna be some slight differences, in particular, the lakes.
So a bit of a flat section here. Nice backside of Mount Doom. All mountains in New Zealand are regarded sacred by the Maori. They are revered as gods. So it is considered tapu or taboo or sacred. So you're not allowed to climb to the top of these mountains. Although some people do it, but it is heavily, heavily frowned upon and considered highly disrespectful by the iwi that is co-managing this land with the dock, the Department of Conservation. the top of the red crater that's the highest point on this track and uh, now we're just chilling at the emerald lakes beautiful greenish blue color to these drainage lakes it's it's rain and snow melt that feeds these lakes but the volcanic minerals surrounding in the rocks help to give it that beautiful color there are also are some thermal vents as well I can smell that that sulfur smell and see the sulfur gas being vented and then there's a blue lake that's a side trek it's like a 20 minute or half hour um, return to the blue lake over there which I think we're gonna do and then it's downhill to the next hut which is actually not that far I think the people just doing the day hike actually have a, a longer day today than we do because I think the blue lake is just the halfway point for them and I don't think our hut is too much further so definitely should be doing this in about five hours saw the red crater up top beautiful red crater and the interesting thing about that is um, the same thing that gives the red crater its red color is the same thing that gives your blood its red color and that is the iron oxidized iron in the in the rock the volcanic rock and the iron that's oxidized in your blood as well So now coming around the backside of Mount Doom as we make our way through, I believe it's called the Rangapu Desert. I can't remember the name, Rangapo, Rangapu Desert. And from what I recall, I believe it is the only desert in New Zealand. Crazy volcanic rock formations here. Man, I ran out of water. Never a good feeling when you run out of water in the desert. But hopefully, hopefully we're almost there. Waking up here on the third day of the Tongariro Northern Circuit and uh, got into the hut yesterday with plenty of daylight to spare and there is a beautiful waterfall, just like a five minute walk right over there and so that was a, a good place to just jump in the water and get refreshed after going through that desert after running out of drinking water in the desert. Some little pools just totally submerged my body under one of the smaller cascades above the main falls there. Nice hut here. It's um, pretty cozy, pretty tight, and uh, 
can hear everything. The hut kind of settles at night. The first one did that as well. I don't know why it does that once you lay down to go to sleep. But today is actually the shortest day of the four day trek. It's only three hours. <clears throat> and so a lot of people will combine today and the last day and just make it a three day thing. Or some people even combine that first four hour day with the day we did yesterday and just make it a two day, one night thing. Although yesterday was pretty, pretty rough. I have to say, surprisingly, two months of beach life, not the best training for a four day trek. So my legs are a little bit out of shape, not used to carrying the heavy pack, but uh, we're getting into it. It's gonna be nice, leisurely three hour day today, so that'll be nice. And then that final day, of course, out through the beach forest and seeing the giant Taranaki Falls. Just enjoying the sun, warming up. We've got plenty of, plenty of time today, just taking it real slow and easy and, and enjoying the morning before we head off on our three hour short hike. So this whole area, noticed it on the way into the hut yesterday, but now I just wanted to talk about it on the way to this next hut, is loaded with this volcanic rock here, pumice, and it looks like this would be heavy, but this is really light. If you've ever used a pumice stone kind of to exfoliate or on your feet or on your hands, or mechanics actually, people who work with their hands will use a soap called lava soap, and it has bits of pumice in it and it's meant to get like grease and grime off your hands. But I've never seen pumice in the wild like this. It actually is really interesting. All the light colored stone in the valley is pumice and it has a real strange uh, sound when you drop it. Almost sounds like you're dropping like a glass bottle, like a real hollow sound. So it came through that beautiful beach forest, and I believe that that is the steepest climb of the day. Nice to have that shade from the beach forest for the steepest part of the day. And I think the hut is just down in this next valley here. It's interesting that, that that kind of band of beach forest has obviously survived multiple eruptions from the volcanoes because everything around it has been scorched by massive lava flows, and it's just that, that thin little finger of of not super old growth beach forest, but relative to everything else that we're seeing, because everything else out here is like bonsai trees. It's just much smaller because there's not enough rain and, and uh, nutrients to survive them in this volcanic soil. So, made it to the hut. But we are not staying in the hut. On our last night, the hut was completely booked. So I've been carrying this tent with us the whole time. So um, thanks to Emma for letting us borrow her tent. And we got this nice, beautiful spot right near this little creek here. So I'm just gonna grab a snack and then jump in this water and cool down. Got the tent set up. Mattresses, uh, air mattresses, kind of fit. Won't have to deal with the loud people in the hut tonight. So this will be the best night of sleep that we get. I think. I'm pretty sure. How deep is it? <laughs> How did you sleep in the tent? Hmm. It's your first appearance on this video. <laughs> Come on. And everyone wants to know how the <laughs> night in the tent went. Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah, but put the rain fly on. <laughs> put the rain fly on next time? Yeah. Why, because it rained? No, it was cold. Because it was too cold? It was too cold. You're telling me those $20 warehouse sleeping bags? Uh... They weren't $20. <laughs> they were 100 something. <laughs> they were? I thought so. No way, man. Yes way, From man. the warehouse? Yes. I don't think so. <laughs> they were. 
So waking up real early this morning, the final day here on the Tongariro Northern Circuit. And uh, the reason why we're getting up super early is because it is the longest day distance wise. It is almost 16 kilometers out, not as steep as yesterday, <clears throat> but uh, just a longer day overall. So we're trying to head out early because someone wants to do some side treks as well to the lakes and also hopefully spend some time at the uh, Taranaki Falls. So it's going to be another long day, but a beautiful day after a somewhat decent night of sleep. Didn't have to deal with the loud people in the hut, but you know, frosty temperatures, tent life, you know, you're constantly shifting around and moving. So I do feel pretty rested though. Do you feel rested? She feels rested too. <laughs> So in order to survive the harsh climate out here, these plants have had to make several unique adaptations. And one in particular is this small red thing that you'll see on the ground, almost looks like moss, but it is called a sundew. And that is a carnivorous plant, much like a Venus flytrap. It, it has a sticky goo that it secretes that the insects get stuck to and then has tentacles which wrap around them and use enzymes to digest those insects. It gets its name from the glistening sticky substance that it produces to attract the insects. And this particular plant thrives in the wetlands around the volcanic area. It thrives in acidic conditions made from the volcanic ash. So only three and a half hours and we made it to Taranaki Falls. So today's not gonna be as long as they projected it to be. They said it was gonna be almost six hours, but we did the lower Tama Lake and that's an additional 20 minutes and we're only three and a half hours in. They say it takes an hour from the falls to get back to uh, Fakapapa Village, but I think it'll probably take half hour, 45 minutes. So we definitely rocked this thing. That that good night's sleep was very restorative and refreshing and now i'm hoping to get an even more refreshing dunk in these falls here So it took us about four hours, 20 minutes. We stopped for a bit, ended up being about five hours total with the long stop at the waterfall and uh, the other side treks. I definitely recommend you take four days, enjoy the side treks, but if you crunch for time and you're really fit, you can do it in two or three, or you're just blowing through some amazing scenery. I would probably recommend if you do it in season, bring earplugs for the hut, because hut life can be noisy. And uh, if you can handle the weight, I recommend tenting it instead of the hut because you're away from the noise and the sleep I got in the tent was much more restorative. Plenty more coming from New Zealand. In the meantime, get out there, find your adventure and be infamous. Infamous.